I'm Grimoth, and I got a little more Christmas magic in my sack. If you've been watching over the past several days, then you've seen my return to Pirate's Gold in the Cutlassery series. I sunk many hours into the Sega Genesis version as a kid through rental stores, and then later as a teen through emulation. You also saw the Odyssey into the Amiga CD32 version of Pirate's Gold. Our adventure today spins off the prep work for that Odyssey. See, I hadn't looked into anything regarding Amiga emulation for a decade. The Amiga was before my time, didn't have a nostalgic connection to pursue it, uh, just... Eh. Told a viewer regretful decisions just recently that it was a mixed bag. No recordings ever came from it. Well, my recent experience with the program FSUAE to emulate the Amiga CD2 version of Pirate's Gold got me pondering on how actual Amiga emulation is these days and recording it. So, meet my Amiga 4000. Now, I've got the DOS version of Sid Meier's Pirates, the manual, the map, the cheat sheet for the copy protection, but it was before my time and I didn't see the appeal of pay playing it when I had such great experience with Pirate's Gold, and I had so many connections to Pirate's Gold. Besides, the DOS version of Sid Meier's Pirates ain't much to look at. But the Amiga version? Why don't we have a gander and see what we can accomplish? I'll link the FSUAE website in the video description, but you're on your own for configuration and plugging in the disks and setting up a hard drive for game installation, so you're not running it on the floppies, which, I mean, you could. I've run games on floppies before in my lifetime, but it's definitely slower, and it's just nice to have some yummy memory. I, uh, it took me a few hours to set up everything. A Christmas application of effort. I will stress, though, that you may want to turn off the emulation of floppy drive sound, unless you're really nostalgic for that. Anyway, let's get on with it. Open up my disc. Frown deeply. There you are. Pirates. Got a number of saves from my testing to make sure that everything looked good. Let's so go ahead and give this a spin. I'll probably pause the video in a little bit to... For sound testing purposes, you know. Recording is hard. Never started. I never bothered with the Commodore 64 version of this game either. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the original one. Again, I have no connection to a Commodore 64 before my time. Not not too eager for that. And I mean, looking at this just in like the screenshots of it and little snippets of gameplay I've peeped at compared to the C64, I mean, why not this version? Yeah. So this game is uh, best controlled through the mouse, uh, though the keyboard can handle s almost every aspect. It can't handle every aspect. At least how it is by its default configuration. I'm sure you could go to the emulator and tweak things accordingly. You know, plug in a controller through a USB port and make the magic happen. I'll probably be cycling between the keyboard and mouse uh, just to see how things feel. We can listen to some pirate songs. Got some Bach and some Handel in here. Oh yeah, those tunes. Now, I've got things displayed in a 1280 by 720 window. Gonna make this a bit bigger though. Uh, just for your convenience and viewing, and also mine. Eye quality ain't what it used to be, I understand. Okay, let me see how that all sounds before we actually start a new career. Terrific. I am a golden god.
You know all those famous came out 22 years ago? Anyway, let's start a new career. We'll select the his special historical period. Uh, Buccaneer Heroes is the recommended ultra super comfy one. Why don't we go War for Profit? Uh, we'll be a French privateer. Uh, our family name. Why don't we go ahead and make it Ravenor? And the difficulty will play on Journeyman. Uh, due to extensive unfamiliarity with this game, though, in my testing, I was playing on Apprentice, and I was cleaning up, which is why I, uh, I can't play on the difficulty. Journeyman it is. As for special ability, uh, I am strongly tempted by skill at navigation. That said, the... The fencing minigame in Sid Meier's Pirates is a... is a mystery to me. I have not... It goes different than in Pirate's Gold, and there's mechanics and nuances uh, that are a part of it, besides just smashing your, your character into the enemy captain. Uh, the, the instruction manual recommends using the Cutlass, as a matter of fact, because it's less of a skill weapon, and it deals the most damage. You just gotta get in super close with the range, and just hold forward and, and pray. Based on how much, you know, personal combat wagers into the, you know, leans into the game, combined with my lack of, like, grasping the nuances right now, we are gonna go with skill at fencing. Born into a family of sailors. You too wish to see your, seek your fortune at sea. The current war offers many opportunities in the West Indies. For an enterprising young man, the tales of old, wealthy privateer captains stir your blood. You decide to seek a life of adventure. In a seaside tavern, you meet a famous captain. I need recent news, he says. Pray tell, when does the treasure fleet arrive at Cartagena in 1640, Mr. Ravenor? This is the copy protection of the game. You could certainly get cracked discs uh, that would bypass that. Uh, I have not done so. Uh, failing the copy protection uh, puts you in a harder mode of the game, uh, as far as I'm aware. Uh, along with uh, flubbing the initial duel that you're thrust into in the game, uh, maybe even flubbing the copy protection makes that duel much harder, if not impossible. I'm not certain. So you can continue playing the game, but you're in some sort of hell mode. At any rate, let me carefully consult my notes. 1640 Treasure Fleet Cartagena. Uh, early January. January. Early. Your vast knowledge encourages your patron. In a few months, you are running before the trade winds with a fast, powerful warship beneath your feet. Land ho, cries the lookout. You have made landfall in the West Indies. On your first voyage, a small convoy of enemy ships falls to your squadron. One enemy cuts grapples and starts away. Take that ship, your captain yell yells, and she's yours. Your party jumps aboard, just in time. So we'll pause here. We do that through the power of the space bar. Uh, our character is always going to be on the right. The enemy captain or guard or whatever is always going to be on the left. You'll see some stats below. Apparently morale, crew counts. Uh, you're going to see some error, arrow indicators around my character. That's indicating uh, what direction I'm aiming in, uh, whether I'm advancing or retreating. Uh, if you see the arrow darken, I am readying a powerful slash attack which has a longer wind-up time, but if it connects, it deals more damage. All right? All right. I suppose you won't see any indicators down at the bottom because this is just some personal combat right here at the beginning. The various input delays, or rather, like, the mechanics of it. I don't know whether to call it input delay. I'm still... Let's just say there's still some learning going on here. Now, should we win, our opponent will drop to their knees. 
And apparently it's considered bad form and may impact your reputation or perhaps even like the likelihood your opponent may get up and resume the fight uh, to continue to strike them once they've fallen down. I've had some difficulty though securing that I back up just due to like the input delay, like as soon as that transpires. You sail to a friendly port nearby. A family friend introduces you to the governor. He provides a letter of mark authorizing attacks on enemy ships. Now you are ready to seek your fame and fortune on the Spanish main. Look at that governor. Bedazzled, bejeweled, decked out in Christmas finery upon a... Really a throne. That's one hell of a chair. I wonder how comfortable that back is, though. I've asked too many questions. Let's proceed. The sailing master takes you aside. The one to see the French governor visit a tavern or two. And will be anxious for plunder and adventure, so we needn't be sightseeing for too long. But the Domingo is close by. We have St. Kitts and St. Martin out there, too. It is 1640. All right. First thing we're going to do is go to check information. And out of concerns that everything may be broken forever. Those were my test save states. I'm going to use that to save state. And we're going to go into save game and make sure this saves properly. Great. If you're playing this on the floppy disks instead of having installed this game to a uh, hard drive, uh, the game will ask you to insert a specially formatted floppy disk. Our party status. We start with 48 men, happy crew, double penis, 3,000 gold, a decent chunk of change. Not a, a glut of crew to play around with, but seems all right. All right. Personal status, French letter of mark, no titles, 25, fine health. We are promising journeyman. Ship's log, nothing in it. Started on April 15th. Cities, there is no immaculately detailed map within this video game. You have the map uh, handout. You can access the city information from here, though. Tells you how various cities are doing, at least to your knowledge. And, uh, how well off they are, how many soldiers there are. Panama, for example, wealthy, very, you know, only has the one fort, but how the hell you gotta reach it, right? Uh, landlocked Puerto Príncipe. Prince! <laughs> Please, Grimoth. Something like that. Go to continue up here. And there's take sun sight. So, I'm a bit torn on this mechanic. A part of me looks at this and sees it's a minigame. Uh, you, uh, by doing this, an in-game day passes as you assess uh, your latitude based on the height of the sun, and uh, depending on the difficulty, uh, you'll have advisors helping you with the longitude aspect, and this is to use in case you're lost at sea, and you take those numbers and you look at the map handout that you got uh, to properly find yourself in the game world. So part of me just like sees it as like a, like a mini game, like a time sink, and part of me thinks it's cool. Just like... I'm conflicted on that. I'm hoping that due to uh, all the time I've spent playing Pirates Gold and the remake, like the, yeah, the aughts remake of Sid Meier's Pirates, I won't need to do this. Uh, hopefully we'll never even show off the mechanic, but it does exist. All right. All right. Visit a town. Tavern Keeper listens with interest as you describe your promising plans. It's worth noting this town is so low quality. I couldn't visit the governor when I was here. There isn't a governor. I think you need, like, a population of 600? But look, it's that promising sea dog, Mr. Ravnor. Look at those fine individuals right there. Uh, the lead brandishing a weapon already. Traveler offers to sell me information. Now, nah, France and Holland are at war with Spain. Holland has allied with England. Okay, so we can advance with uh, Holland uh, by beating up Spain, just like we can advance with France by beating up Spain. The gold mine at Santiago Vega, it's not Port Royal until the next scenario. Uh, that means they've got a lot of money, and they won't have the corresponding troop count to defend it. Uh, that may be a worthwhile target for us to go after. I don't know whether they have a port. 
me actually check what information I've got of Santiago Vega. Nothing. All right. Is where we are. Yeah, only 300 citizens. It has been a long time since French class. Petit Goave? I forget how to pronounce the accent. The grave? Ugh. That and uh, it blurs with, like, not just like my Spanish classes, but also, uh, like, I've used Spanish more in real life than I have, yeah, in real life and not like school life than I have French. And certainly both more than German. <laughs> I took all of those when I was in high school, and French I took in college because it was the most recent foreign language I took. Ugh. All right. And how about Santiago itself? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a powerful and potent city. That's going to be a bit to our northwest, uh, where Santiago Vega, I guess, would be to our southwest? Yeah. We've got Tortuga. Uh, no information on that, but that's definitely a French settlement. It'll be to our north. And we're some distance away from the uh, the cluster of St. Martin and St. Eustatius and St. Kitts and Nevis. Unfortunate. We don't even get to know when we have no information who, like, owns these settlements. But, I mean, I'm looking at Cartagena, and I know that's Spanish. Lucera, that's English, and that's going to be, like, in the Keys area where all the shoals are. All right. You can see what the speed is like me using my keyboard compared to me flying about in the mouse. Here's how the uh, the merchant looks. That's a fusion of both like shipwright and like actual merchant. We have two pinnaces. Uh, we don't have much food in the hold. Uh, they're doing okay on wealth here. Let me say we don't need to speak to a governor. We know our orders. I would like to get a Dutch letter of mark before I really lay into the Spanish. Uh, but Curaçao, I like how I... Don't worry about it. Uh, Curaçao and uh, St. Eustatius and St. Martin are many days to the east. Uh, I'm probably going to lay into Santiago Vega, courtesy of the gold mine there. The, uh, the art style, like the... It looks really nice. I like that. Let's see, is there anything else I want to do? Mm. I flipped through everything. And that's how the log looks when it updates. No, I, I think we're good to get it out of here and start start sailing, start fighting. Yes, yes, click to continue. Even the damn game's rushing, but... <laughs> Alright. Now... All right, I, there's no need for me to ramble anymore. I, I was, no, was going to note that it, I have a little bit of a difficult time telling whether my sails are are reefed or are full. I don't have, like, an icon in the bottom right. I might have to actually pay attention to the ship model itself. And truthfully, I forget the key command to, to do that with the sails. I'm going to have to check the instruction manual after this video. Uh, we'll investigate. It's a French penis. Uh, no need. Let's go for Santiago Vega. French again. Penises, no interest. Penises uh, can go over shoals, as sloops can. Oof, that's speed. <laughs> Steering the ship is a little, uh, especially with the mouse, it's a little... Uh, all right, no fort here in Santiago Vega. Let's get straight into it. I will... Uh, Oh, what the hell, in honor of the Cutlass series, and as the instruction manual dictates, let's pull out the Cutlass. Nope. Oh, hey, hey, don't, don't be pointing up. Instruction manual is like, oh, the individual movements of the blades. You don't need to worry about that. Your character is confident enough to handle that. And, like, pushes the idea of, like, you know, 
on higher difficulties, wanting to... You know, there's a lot of game mechanics, we'll put it like that. And instruction manuals aren't always the best presentation of how a game actually plays out. Uh, in part due to patching, and also part because the... Uh, the crafters of the instruction manual may not be the best sources of information on how a game should be played. Towna has had warning of your party's approach. Much of their gold has been hidden away. Uh, notably, I didn't run into any Spanish vessels. It was like, what, the couple of French pinnaces? And, you know, the, the, most of, much of the gold's been hiding away. Like, I didn't think that was a... didn't think I dithered there. At any rate... They may also not have had any money, despite the gold mine. Because it's not showing that I didn't have any plunder. And I guess that would make sense when I looked at the, the city information. It wasn't showing anything, huh? Hmm. I'm just gonna take the food. I press that key. And go to Santiago Vega. Was it displaying information? It may not have been, but we knew the gold mine was there. So yeah, despite the gold mine, they're broke. Oh well. Such is life. They're not the only ones. Let's see if we can get into uh, a naval battle here, just so we can say that we had some action. Uh. Yeah. Huh. I didn't have this before in, like, my testing. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> hmm. Alright. I think I, I hand spasmed the left mouse button, which popped up the menu or supposed to, but didn't actually pop out the menu. Alright, investigate. A bark? Oh, it's a pirate! We shall close for battle in a pinnace. I will raise the sails here. You can tell which ship is mine due to the crosshair. Rotating is, uh... We'll say it's not on, on a dime like it was in the Amiga CD for the two version of Pirate Skull. We'll put it like that. That's not a bad thing. The two ships crash together. Through the smoke, you spot Colonel... Orgones approaching. He'll use a longsword. About double our men count. That, uh, that input delay for me is a little jarring. It feels better on the keyboard. And I can hot swap between the two at any moment. Here to be doing all right in this personal combat fight, but it is journeyman difficulty, and I did pick skill at fencing. Let me see if I can pull back here properly. Yeah, game reads my uh, my input with the keyboard there better than it does with my mouse. I would like the bark. I uh, carry some extra tonnage. I'll just have to stay on the shoals. Send a prize crew, please. Uh, information? Nah. Not too concerned. Right-clicking here. Oh, the mouse gives me all the stuff. I would like all the stuff. Thirteen sailors? Welcome aboard, guys. Spinning here with the, uh... The keyboard is a little rough, but on the, the mouse, it feels a little spastic, so... Six of one, half a dozen of the other, right? Let's head up for Tortuga and end the video here. Yeah, can't save unless you're in town. Might as well head there. This awkward sailing of west to east that we're doing. French waters? Another pirate, perhaps? No. So our accomplishments are we uh, we beat up a pirate. And, uh, we sacked a city that had a gold mine, but no gold. Gotta be careful. There's gonna be some shoals to the right of Tortuga. And it will fuck with me. I'm just looking for enemy pirates to have beaten up. Not finding any. 
Yep. Yep. All right. Sail the town. Visit the governor. What's up? My dear Mr. Ravenor, we are at war with the Spanish. I charge you to seek out and destroy our enemy ships and towns. Look at how sparkling that is. Damn. In recognition of your brave and loyal service to the French crown, I do gladly confer upon you the title of Ensign. I have recently had news of your long-lost sister. Man! Look at that evil Spaniard. Marquis de Montalban! Montalban? Oh! <gasps> My god. <laughs> How do you look better here than you did? Oh, look at that art. Oh, he looks so good. I wonder if he's as gifted of a swordsman as he is in the Ots remake. Okay. At least he's not hanging out in Santa Catalina. That's good. The governor introduces you to his young daughter. She is presently being courted by Count Roberval, but she seems interested in you. I like the, uh, I like the coloration there of the, the dress, the gown. What do you want to call that? Pretty nice with some, like, some good, strong 80s metal hair. Like pleasant conversation. Good strong. We were made of French ensign, and 24 men wish to sign up with me after... Basically haven't been paid nothing. Ah, we don't need that information. France at war with England? Okay, we got some opportunities there. If we head east uh, along that aisle chain there, uh, we can get promotions with both... Uh, we can get promotions with France by beating up England. And uh, promotions with Holland can come by beating up Spanish ships around San Juan. So opportunities for advancement here in the game. I don't feel so much like going off and pursuing evil Spaniards right now. I just want to get a feel of the, like, how everything is, right? The game mechanics, how crunchy it all could be. Uh, we'll sell one of the pinnaces. We'll keep the bark. Uh, as for cargo... I forget what the max count for cannons is on a bark. We'll just go with 12. And I doubt I'm going to need this much food, particularly since I anticipate I will be uh, raiding enemy ships as I go. We'll go with uh, 30 tons on that. All right. It's going to be it for now. See you later.